Shalom, Rastafari. Um, once again, um, a Melkam Fasika, a happy uh, uh, Passover, Pesach, to my brothers and my sisters, to the faithful Ethiopian Hebrews and the righteous among the Gentiles. But to the wicked, you know, we say expletive, deleted, deleted to this Easter stuff. But we caught this right here, which was interesting. Um, and it's on today's, um, this is so-called Easter Sunday, April 8th, uh, 2012, right? Um, and we caught this right here, bunnies, bonnets, and other Easter. Get that word right there, that key word, tradition. Tradition. Make a note of that, disciples. And then look it up, you know, look it up in the Bible and look up, look up what our Master, our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, says about don't follow their traditions and the traditions of men and people that make void the word of God. First of all, this is a holy, you know, this is a, truly a holy season, but they turn it into a folly day. Now, here they're going to explain something that I thought was interesting. Um, we hide, notice what it says, we hide eggs, feast on ham, you, you know, ham, chanzir. Ham, not kosher, not good. Feast on ham. And wait for an oversized here, a here, that's a key word too to look up, the word, the word you see right there, here, to bring goodly baskets, goodly, or ghouly, really, goodly. Remember good and God and, and ghoul and the God of this world, goodly baskets. It says, learn the story behind these and other ways. They're being very specific. You know, this is in the latter days, ye shall comprehend it and understand it. You know, you shall fully understand it in the latter days. And these are the latter days of the Gentile, of the Gentile world dominion or the counterfeit Christianity. And all of this is associated with the counterfeit Christianity, but has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible or the truth of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, yes, was Christos. That, that's the key thing you have to keep in mind. So now they're saying to learn the story. Story, I find it very interesting the words they use in this particular um, baiting for this particular article on the MSN, the um, Microsoft portal right here. It says learn the story. Story, if you look at this word story, story is myth. So, that, so they're teaching you the mythology not the Bible. Remember, this is a holy season. This is, you know, people going to church so-called for what? Easter. But what's really behind that, they say? They say the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But what does the bunnies have to do with that? What does the bonnets have to do with that? What does the other so-called Easter, and, the, and, and this is also another key word, Easter traditions. So we're going to touch on briefly as a couple of the key words and how you can look it up and find the truth for yourself. So they say, learn the story of really the mythology behind these and other ways, the ways of the Gentiles, that we celebrate the, hol the, the spring holiday each year. Then they talk about send some puppy love in an Easter e-card. Um, you may, they're giving you permission, you may love peeps, but do you really know them? You know, this is all part of the fear matrix, you know, the confusion, the Babylon matrix right here. Now they have this, it seems like a little girl, but you can never tell. It could be a girl or a boy, you understand, wearing uh, a bunny, a bunny outfit going, walking all alone out into some sort of park sort of area with a basket. You remember these fairy tales they teach us about Little Red Riding Hood and so forth and so on? They have nothing to do with the Bible but with a so-called Western and some Eastern European traditions, but mostly Western European or Gentile traditions that have nothing whatsoever to do with the truth of God and Christ. But many so-called nominal Christians, you understand, this is what they teach their children, setting them up, you know, setting them up for Satan's matrix, setting them up for the devil's matrix. Now, here, we're going to go to another another particular window right here. We put um, uh, Ishtar and Easter in, 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 in a search right here, Ishtar and Easter. And then when you look at this right here, you notice the first thing that comes up, Ishtar 
Easter, you have bunny, you have egg bunny, you understand? You have bunny, rabbit, you know, um, it changed up right there. Um, but then down here, the search results for Ishtar, that's where Easter really comes from, Ishtar. It tells you right here, just, just in the highlights of the Google search, Ishtar, which is pronounced Easter, was a day that what commemorated the resurrection of one of their gods, not the true god, one of their gods that they call Tammuz, right, who was believed to be the Menomen, so forth and so on. Then it says Easter Sunday or Ishtar Pagan Day. So how you, you know, Easter Sunday, they're still using that word Easter right there, but he said that he changed the name to the pagan god Ishtar or Easter. The true Christians never, the true Christians, the real Christians never allowed it to change. Even our so-called the Puritans who came to America, you understand, would not change that. You understand? But there's different Gentiles. There was the faithful, a few of the faithful, a handful, and then there was the unfaithful Gentiles that came and took over this, um, this, uh, this, this enterprise called um, the establishment of America. But that's a different but related story. Here we have Passover lamb versus the Ishtar Easter ham. You, you get that right there? The Passover lamb versus the Ishtar or the Easter ham. So here it says the, the name Easter comes from the name of the Babylonian and Assyrian goddess Ishtar. Here is what the Encyclopedia Britannica says about Ishtar. So go look that up as well. Um, what is the origin of Easter? You understand? What is the origin? It says some call it the mother goddess or what the Bible speaks about as the queen of heaven, which the disobedient and unfaithful Israelites who turned their backs to the true and living God. You understand? This is, this is why the lost sheep are lost today speaking about the so-called black people, the so-called Negroes in the Americas and the Caribbean, they are the lost sheep whose ancestors worship the mother goddess, just like their people are doing now in this golden cafes, worshiping the golden goddess, you know, the blonde hair, the golden fleece. Anyway, the mother goddess Ishtar originally pronounced Easter. So it tells you a little bit, a little bit more there. In other lands, she was called um, Os, Ostre, Astare, and in the Bible you have the Astaroth, um, Ostera, um, Istre, and other names. Now it goes on, you got a couple more articles right here, Easter holiday, holiday traditions, and their origins, what are the true origins, so forth and so on, the origin of the folly days, or so-called holiday traditions from the goddess Ishtar or Inanna and um, Ostara to Easter eggs and Easter bunny. So if you really want to learn what's really behind the pagan Easter, but there's, a, there's an interesting um, verse, let's see right here, last one, is Easter based on the goddess Ishtar? I think a Yahoo answers right here. Easter is a pagan holiday honoring the queen of heaven, just like we've been saying, the queen of heaven goddess or Ishtar not a Christian holy day. It's not a Christian holy day and definitely not a Judaic or Hebrew um, holy day either, which we know as Fasica or Pesach. Easter not found in the Bible. Then it gives you some more. Is Easter another Illuminati conspiracy? This is why they are giving it such prominence based on their so-called um, astrotheology. What is Easter and what is Ishtar? Um, who is Ishtar? What is Easter? The Roman, here's what we get it, the Roman, Roman pagan Catholic. And we know now by, because of like Nicki Minaj, another one of the so-called modern goddesses, that she has a demon that's named Roman. So we can see the whole connection right here. How did Easter, Ishtar, or Astarta become a Christian holiday? Well, among the Gentile or the whitewashed Christians who also whitewash the true identity and the humanity of our black Lord, Joshua or Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, 
Easter or Ishtar here. Once again, breaking that down right here, um, the word Easter appears once in the King James um, version of the Bible. Herod, Herod has put Peter in, in prison, quote, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people because Herod, you know, Herod was an Edomite. Now, I think you might know if you search a little bit on some of the other Hebrew Hebrew sites, you'll get to learn, well, who are the Edomites then and now? Now, did Easter originate from the Babylonian goddess? They say, no, Easter's beliefs have been derived from, derived this name from the English, from a goddess associated with spring, Estarte. Actually, the goddess Estarte can be traced to, so this is somebody else or others trying to say, well, no, that's not correct, but, you know, find the truth for yourself. So where did Easter come from? So there's a whole lot of um, blogs here. You know the symbol right here? The symbol is actually the, the English use it, Great Britannia, you know, because she's the mother. Britain is the mother, and America is the virgin daughter of Babylon. So we have the Labyrinth of Truth right here on page 18. This is, a, I think, a vid out there, so you can check this out on the YouTubes from another site, so forth and so on. All right, I want to give you that a little bit of that background, so forth and so on, the connection, the real connection but behind um, Easter. And if we go to some of the pictures, you can see a little bit of the graphics and see whether these pictures, oh, so it's very interesting. See what we got here? Yeah, what we got here, some of the, is it Passover? Is this what you're really worshiping? You know, or is it this what you're worshiping right here? Or how about this one right here? Is this what you're worshiping? You know, what are you worshiping if you're caught up in this Easter thing? What is it that you really so-called are, um, who is it you're really honoring? You know, and this is site right here. It gives you a little bit more on it. Easter, Ishtar was the goddess of springtime. She was a fertility or a sex, a sensuality goddess whose symbols include rabbits and and eggs because of the, they fecundate. That's not a curse word. Fecundate. You understand? They fecundate. But you can see the link with the popular four-letter word. Just like love, they say, is a four-letter word. So here we see some more of the imagery that's associated with um, Ishtar, Easter, and um, so-called uh, uh, the resurrection or the erection of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. All right, but what is it that you really are celebrating during this particular time? It's interesting because one of the some of the Negro preachers they got something going on right now. I think this Sunday today it's honor thy mother. You understand? They're having an honor thy mother celebration. I thought that was interesting. The honor thy mother. I said, what about thy father and thy mother? You understand? Or at least their mother, thy mother and thy father, according to Leviticus. You know, but um. That's just a part of the proof of what's really going on, the truth behind, you understand, behind the the scenes. So we have Easter right here, and all these are the ways of the Gentiles because it has nothing to do with the original point of this particular day, which is Fasica or Pesach, Pesach, which more has to do with, you know, which more has to do with the Passover lamb versus the Ishtar or the Easter ham. So right here, ham equals a mockery. Ham is a mockery of the sacrificial lamb. Thou shalt dine on no swine at any time. Thou shalt dine on no swine. So it's interesting how black people through uh, 400 plus years of willy, slick willy lynchism and, and so-called slavery and captivity in the so-called Americas look at ham to be a delicacy. Many are so possessed by the pig that they tell you that they can't, they, they can't give up the pig. They can't give up the pig no time. So that's very interesting as well there. So let's give you the one place where in the Bible we have uh, uh, Easter. Let's find the one place in the Bible for Easter. So as we go and use this search right here, Blue Letter Bible, um, give it a moment, 
and they'll bring up the one time in the King James version of the Bible. It's not found in the original manuscripts. That point has to be made. It's not found in the original manuscripts. But um, King James translators use um, their license that they gave themselves to translate it right here. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four or quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So you see this word right here that's in red, right? And it has the 3657. So we click on 3957. You know, when we're doing our search and we find out, okay, what's behind that particular word right there? You understand what's the origin or what's the linguistics behind that word? So here's what it has behind that word. Do you see what's there? It says Pasca, the Strong's Greek uh, 3957 is Pasca, like the Pascal. You understand? From Fasica, Fasica, or Pesach, Pesach, Pesach. Right, so we have Pascha, which is the Greek um, uh, transliteration uh, of it. So they say Pascha right here. It's a neuter noun, right? And the pronunciation Pascha is of Aramaic origin. And here's what it tells us right here. The original biblical use for Pascha, which we just showed you, is what's behind um, the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, which has it right there. This Acts of the Apostles, uh, here we have it, uh, 12 and 4. So in Acts of the Apostles, 12 and 4, is the only place in the King James Version of the Bible that we have Easter. But when we go behind that word to text that King James allegedly translated from, we have Pascha. Right and Pascha, as we see right here, is used in the Bible um, 29 um, times in 27 verses, and you can see everywhere else that it's used for, it's referring to the red letter, the red numbers is Passover. Everywhere's Passover, 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 and this is New Testament. This is this is true Christian. You understand? Know it's Passover, Passover, Passover. Passover. And then we have this one place right here where uh, King James puts in um, Easter into his, his Bible. And this is how we have Easter today, all based on one particular mistranslated, based on a mistranslation, lost in translation, based on a mistranslation. So here's the outline. It's the Paschal sacrifice, which was a custom to be offered for the people's deliverance of old from Egypt, or the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. Then we have the Paschal Lamb. The Lamb, the Israelites, were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, the first month of the year in memory of the day. You see, it's a memorial in memory of the day on which their fathers or ancestors, the true patriarchy, prepared, preparing to depart from Egypt, were bidden by God, by Ha Elohim, by Yahweh, to slay and eat a lamb and to sprinkle their door posts with its blood. That the destroying angel, some say this could be the Niduru sign, the destroying angel, or some say a comet or or the tenth planet, you understand, that it, the destroying angel seeing the blood, seeing that sign, seeing the blood, might pass over their dwellings. Christos, or Christ, the anointed crucified, is likened to the slain Paschal Lamb. So they're explaining it very simply here, that Christ, the Messiah, truly the black Messiah, the black Messiah Lynch, Christ crucified, both hung on a tree, is likened to the slain Paschal Lamb. Then thirdly, we have the Paschal Supper, or the Lamb Supper. Then we have the Paschal Feast, the Feast of the Passover, extending, extending from the 14th 
to the 20th day of the month this year from the evening of the 6th to, I think, the, about the 13th, the day of the 13th. So this one word, 28 times, is translated as Passover. One time is translated as Easter. What do the Gentiles follow? Easter. Why? Because Easter reflects the pagan um, European or the ancient pagan traditions, which were preserved, and we can say, in Europe. And so when they became Christian, they basically linked one with the other and thereby have continued to fool the entire world. This is why when we study the Bible, the Bible says this concerning the ways of the heathen. It says this right here, Jeremiah 10 and 2. It says, Thus saith the, the Lord, Yahweh, Thus saith Jah, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now notice the two of these we have going on. We have the way of the heathen, all these counterfeit Christian holidays, and then we have the signs of that the signs of that heaven. For the heathen are dismayed, they're confounded. Everybody wondering what's gonna happen in twenty twelve, what's gonna happen December twenty first, is it the end of the world? The heathen are dismayed at it, which means we as true Beta Israel should not be dismayed dismayed at at these signs. Ezekiel says, I will scatter them. Yahweh Josh says that he will scatter us as he scattered black people throughout the world, particularly in, in the North Country, in the Americas and the Caribbean. I and I scattered them among the heathen, among the Gentiles, the Europeans, the Anglo Europeans, and they were dispersed through the countries all through the Americas, the Caribbean, South Central America, and, and elsewhere, according to their way, because they went astray, and according to their doings, I judge them. So this, this all connects with who we are as the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel. Because when you study the Bible, what it says concerning the true Israel, the true Hebrews, you'll find that only black people so-called Ethiopian Hebrews fulfill that, but they're ignorant of that, and they have learned the ways of the heathen. And this all now brings us once again forward, front and center with this MSN that kind of inspired this little, you could say, rant on learn not the ways of the heathen or, or Easter Ishtar, learn not the ways of the heathen. Now they're going to tell you, or allegedly they're going to tell you what's behind what does any of this have to do with Christ, first and foremost? So let's, let's back this up. What does any of this have to do with Christ? And think about it. Many churches, this is what many churches are doing alongside a counterfeit, a counterfeit Christian tradition. You understand? A counterfeit Christian tradition. So here on this know-it-all page, let's see if it came in the Easter. This is know-it-all. This is where they ask you to, you know, you can learn the story. So are they going to tell us the real story behind it? Well, so far this page doesn't seem to have have come in. It's blank. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you, if you check it out in time, maybe you get a better. But, but look what they're showing us. They're just showing us the goddess. You know, they're showing us, look at that, the egg and the goddess. Is this what is really behind it? You know what I'm saying? The other page is loading. Okay, the, the myth. You understand? Dating myths. It's on my myths here. Right? But where's the information about um Ishtar Easter? You see, you see the link right here. Here's the link. Right, the meaning behind Easter traditions. You do better on better off in just Googling it, searching it for yourself. But this is so very clear. My people, my people, come out of her. You understand? Her sins have reached up into heaven come out of her. So now you can understand a little more of this uh, mystery, the mystery of iniquity. Here they claim to be Christians, yet the traditions that they follow actually comes out of the worst forms, you understand, the worst forms of pagan, of so-called heathen, and that which clearly if you study your Bible, the Lord was very upset with Israel for that, and he scattered them. This is why they don't even know who they are. Black folks don't even know who they are or why they're going through what they're going through. 
Yovis. Um, and, and these are some of the individuals that, that were behind it. Constantine, you know, the so-called first uh, European um, Roman emperor. This is where they co-opted the whole religion of, of Christianity. Yovisan, and they persecuted the black Jews. You know, and some of the white Jews got a little bit of resonance from that on, on a certain level, but that's a whole different story right there. But you can clearly see, if you look it up for yourself, the clear connections between Ishtar, you understand, who really refers to that particular star right there. You know, so black woman that's living in the image of, of, of the beast, living in the image of white woman, the whole blonde hair, wig thing, and the whole sexual thing going on for a lot of these um these artists, you know, the sensuality, the the fucundity, you know, to fucundate or fecundate, you know, not for the purpose of procreation, notice, for the purpose of recreation, because after all they eat the Easter eggs. Think about the similarity of what they're eating. Remember what the Lord speaks about how they would eat their children, you understand, and how they would sacrifice their children. You know, to Molag, to Ishtar. Well, this is your Ishtar, folks. This is your Easter. There's, there's more on this. Search it out for yourself. Check it out. As we highlighted, there's a lot of the pages out there that actually goes into different research, you know, more detail. You know, learn what really is behind this uh, Ishtar. Here's, here's Deanna right here. You know, if you look in um, Acts of the Apostles, Paul got into some conflict with those who worship the goddess Diana, you understand, or Artemis right here, Artemis, Diana. You see all those all those breasts on her? They're like, I guess, a bunch of eggs or some weird, that's some really weird stuff, you know. But this is really what you're worshiping, you know. This is what you're worshiping, and it's all a, a sin, a, a very serious sin. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of folks, Though they recognize the system is evil, they can't come out of it. You know what I'm saying? Because the gods that they're calling on are the false gods. They have to put away all of that heathenism, you know, all of this heathenism um, from before his face. They have to purify themselves. You know what I'm saying? But the first thing they need is to, is to have knowledge. Most folks don't even know what's really behind, you know what I'm saying, what's behind these... Um, these false gods that they worship, you understand? And you ever wonder why, you know, nobody really has a problem with Easter? Notice that. You know, you don't have the religious groups jumping up, you know, those atheist groups jumping up talking about Easter. Isn't that very interesting? And you see another link here between, you know, this whole pagan, heathen, white western worship right there. So um, there's a little bit more I want to, share with you. Let's just go back to this page, that, that, that last link right there. Not not that page, but let's go to this page right here. There's one other element. You know that verse in Jeremiah? Let's just hear a little bit more of that verse right there where, where Yahweh, where Jah says, learn not the way of the heathen. Now, what we since we've already disobeyed that, now we have to unlearn you know what I'm saying? Unlearn the way of the heathen by learning what Passover, you know what I'm saying, what the Paschal, Fasica, Pesach, what it's really about. You know what I'm saying? And the real, the real uh, reason for the season and the real meaning behind the season. So you see what Yahweh says here? He says, learn not their ways. The people did. After the people did, they were judged. You understand? They were judged accordingly. So it says right here, notice, okay, 10 and 2. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, right? One cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Sounds like another holiday they're, they're preparing for. They deck it with silver and with gold. 
they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. It's like a Christmas tree, right? Notice the connection up here between the signs of the heavens. I mean, the, uh, speaking about the signs of the heavens, it begins off, Hear ye the word of Yahweh, the word which Yahweh speaketh to you, O house of Israel. That is Beta Israel. Beta Israel, the house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, the Goyim, the Gentile, white supremacy, you understand, um, the Anglo-American confusion, Babylon, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, 2012, what's going on in the heavens, solar flares, alignments, all these things, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the Goyim, the Gentiles, are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people, of the heathen, are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. In other words, somebody got to carry them. Because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like thee, Adoni, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee? Sound like revelations here, O King of nations. For to thee doth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like to thee. There is none like to the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. There is none among all the wise men of all the nations, but they are altogether brutish, and foolish, the stock or that piece of wood, even the stock market, is a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Uphaz, the work of the workman, and the hands of the founder, blue and purple is their clothing. You always see their kings and others, even celebrities parading around the blue and the purple. They are all the work of cunning cunning men, but Jah is the true God. He is the living God, Jah live, and the everlasting king, Kedemawi Haile Selassie. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. This is the connection right here with what we have in Revelation, talking about the wrath of the Lamb, the wrath of the Lamb. Um, verse uh, 10, and, 10, and, 10 and 11, thus shall ye say to them, the gods, the so-called gods, everybody talking about gods nowadays, but the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, all these storms and strange weather phenomena. Some of them might be some of the tampering of the harp thing, but truly we know that the true God is greater. Our Father, Abba Kedus, is greater than all of them. And bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood. So all these images we see, falsehood. And there is no breath in them. They are vanity like the Statue of Liberty and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob, of Yaakov, the black jack, 
of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel, the true black Israel, Beta Israel, is the rod of his inheritance. Yahweh Tzabaot, the Lord of hosts, Kedemawi Haila Selase, is his name. Gather up thy weirs out of the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus saith Jah, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once, and I will distress them that they may find it so. Woe is me to my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I said, truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. This is now the prophet Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah also, some say, has a, the Nibiru, is speaking about this Nibiru, of this cosmic celestial sign from a biblical or Hebrew perspective, from a true perspective. Now, here we have um, Arameus, or Arameus, we have him saying, woe is him for his heart, because he's recognizing that this is a judgment against the lost sheep. This is a judgment against them. My tabernacle is spoiled and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore and to set up my curtains. Look at this. For the pastors, you see how the Easter connection, the pastors, the preachers, are become brutish, ignorant, and have not sought Yahweh. They have not sought what's really in the Bible. They sought traditions, vain traditions of men. Therefore, they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brute is come, and a great commotion out of the north, even this north country, out of the north country. You see that? A great commotion out of North America to make the cities of Yehuda, of Judah, desolate, speaking about the African-American Negro, you understand, Judah, Judah in exile, and a den of dragons. You can make that connection right there, can't you? A den of dragons. Adoni, Adonai, O Lord, I bet to his father, I follow, father of the house, O father of the Beta Israel. I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. I don't know. Correct me. This should be our prayer. Correct I. But with judgment, not in thine anger, least thou bring me, least thou bring I, even I and I, to nothing. Pour out. You know, we're going into age of what? Aquarius. The pouring out. Pour out what? Pour out thy fury upon the heathen, the goyim that know thee not. They don't know Haile Selassie. They don't know the true God. They don't know the black Lord, the true Lord, Joshua, Jesus Christos. They don't know him in truth. And upon the families that call not on thy name, for they have eaten up Yaakov. They have eaten up Jacob, the black jack, the black people. You understand? Know and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. Look at Africa. You know what I'm saying? Look at Africa. It's desolate. A couple of cities here and there, but it's desolate. So this this um this word in Jeremiah, I didn't want to just give you that sound that sound bite right there, but that sound bite is the main sound bite where he says, Learn not the way of the heathen. You know what and when we look at all these things here, let's see if that page came in yet. No, it's still a blank page on the Easter garbage. All right, see, so that was a fake right there. They just want to keep you in, you know, keep you in that, that, that mind control when they brought this up right here, showing this This is a sacrifice. This girl is being sacrificed to, to Ashtar, to, to, to Ishtarot, you know, is being sacrificed to the queen of heaven, you know, the bunnies, the bonnets, and other Easter traditions. If you really want to learn about it, just do a search like this right here. You understand? Put put um, Ishtar and Easter together. You understand? Know Easter together, as we as we've done here, and where we look at some of the images right here. We're looking at some of the images associated with uh, with Easter, so you can see what you know what it's really about. You know, it's about this celebrity shit. You know, um, but look look under everything, right? under everything, 
You know, that's what you really, you know, that's what you're really worshiping. You know, that's what you're really sacrificing, you know, sacrificing your children to. And the question you should be asking, is it really worth it? You know, when the wrath of Jah come, is it, was it all really worth it? You know what I'm saying? And really turning your back behind the real meaning, you know, from the sacrifice of that black man, of the black Messiah, or of the black Jesus, the true Christ, you know what I'm saying, whose name has been blasphemed and his image, you know what I'm saying, whitewashed and confused and confounded to get you to worship Tammuz. You know what I'm saying, to get you to worship Tammuz. So put these two in your search right here, and you'll come to some of those pages or other pages. And you could add in other words as well. But you really need to learn more what's behind this. There's a lot of information. Before it wasn't so where the individual can just go to their computer and, and search and find all of this and document all this. Okay, they took uh, our, our, our page one out right here. So we'll pause for the cause right here on this particular um, subject matter. There was another, one other verse. There was one other verse, or oh, maybe two other verses, since we have this open right here, on Gentiles. The Gentiles, okay, it's back on right now. The Gentiles are the Goyim. You understand? Know the Goyim would be those from the north, from the European countries, if you really understand what the scripture is saying. So here's, here's those sites right there. Right, those sites right there that you can go into a little more of, you know, your own uh, research on it. So the Goyim are the Gentiles, right, the Europeans, the Europeans and thus by extension the Anglo-Americans. You know, we as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, you understand, know as the black people that whose name and identity has been stolen and taken, well, it's been it's been taken from us on a level, but on a level according to the scriptures, we turn our back on on Jah. We turn our back on Yahweh, on the God of Israel, and we started worshiping even the African heathen idols and gods and stuff like that. Even when we was in Africa, so we have to recognize the only remnant that really stayed more or less faithful and true is is Ethiopia. That's why Ethiopia maintained her sovereignty. You understand? And then we have the fulfillment in Hila Selassie. You know, in the king of kings and in the king of the king of Israel, the true king of Israel, right? Not the state of Israel, but the true Israel. Now, here we have Ezekiel 4 and 13, and the Lord and Yahweh said, Even thus shall the children of Israel, the children, remember um, Amos 9 and 7? Look up Amos 9 and 7, where it says, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So when we see this right here, he was giving us a revelation prophetic key right there. So when we see this, we can understand this, that Yahweh is saying, that Jah is saying, even thus shall the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel, children of Ethiopians, that connection, Amos 9 and 7, eat their defiled bread. You understand? Not the true Passover bread, not the true living bread of, of the Lamb, but the defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. So who did this? Was it the white man, a white man that did it, really? No, it was John that drove us among these, these heathen, you know what I'm saying, to basically fulfill a sentence, you know what I'm saying, because our ancestors had, had committed abomination against the Almighty. There was another verse in here that we wanted to, touch on where talk about the heathen and rain. Let's see if we can, because you hear everybody talking about oh, the rain man, who is the rain man. Though this is not the main point of this vid here, but in the last, uh, um, in the last uh, ver chapter, uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah, oh, here, here, here we go right here. Jeremiah chapter 10, if you go a couple more verses. So this was interesting. Perhaps ones and ones can pick up on this about the rain, rain man and all that. Jeremiah 14, 22, it says, Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles, the white supremacists and the Anglo-Europeans, that can cause rain? Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? 
can the heavens, can they really make it rain? Art not thou he, Adonai, Adoni, our God, Eloheinu? Therefore, we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. This was kind of interesting right here, you know, where it was talking about, are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Could you hear a lot of these um, uh, demonically possessed or touched artists? Music artists talking about the rain and bringing rain and their the rain men and women and all this kind of stuff like that. Maybe it's just a metaphor. But anyway, this is not a metaphor. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is not a metaphor, the reality you see going on. This is the, the manifestation of the metaphor. You know what I'm saying? This is the manifestation of the metaphor. So check out more on this. Um particular subject matter, the whole Ishtar and the and, and, and the Easter, you know, the Ishtar and the Easter uh connection. All right, brothers and sisters and and uh Shalom Rastafari and uh Melkama Fasika Lehulacho, the Jesus Christos.